Yo, bro. My car done yet? Aight, shit. I was just wondering, since you got that turbo thing on there now, what kind of boost gauge you putting in the interior of my car, man? That is a good question, because I actually have this ultra-rare, discontinued, triple-gauge A-pillar made just for an E46 sedan. Nah, dog. I don't want nothing like that in my car. Listen, I need something more discreet. Something that's there, but you can't tell that's there. Know what I'm saying? Long story short, I'm expecting you to work a miracle for me, dog. Okay, sounds great. I'm sure I can figure something out for you. But in the meantime... Would you mind turning around and facing that wall behind you really quick? Actually, wait a second. There is one company, I believe to be in UK, and they offer a really innovative product, or multiple rather. One of them being a miniature boost gauge that actually fits directly into the original gauge cluster. But the name, what was that company name? Oh, that's right, Zodatech. BMW E46 Turbo Build. In today's video, we are going to install, then wire in this custom boost and AFR gauge. Okay, so here we have the components from Zodatech. You have the major control modules, such as this one right here. This is the primary controller for the miniature gauge. You have the boost and vacuum sensor, and then you have the wideband controller. These components here, I have them all attached to a bracket that I made. It keeps them more organized. It is going to attach the car with these Phillips fasteners right there. This right here is the display itself. It is a little miniature LED gauge that will fit directly into the gauge cluster. They also do include this Bosch O2 sensor, which is for the wideband, plus this vacuum T in case you are splicing into an existing vacuum line, as well as this small filter to keep contamination out of the boost sensor. As far as getting power to these components, I made my own little harness here, which will be getting power from the fuse box with a added fuse. It's a little fuse tap. It will get plugged into here, and then it will send power to these two outlets here, which will connect to this and to the primary gauge controller right there. I also made this chassis ground harness, which will ground these controllers right to the chassis. Okay, so when it comes to installing this LED display, if your car is not automatic transmission, you're going to need to source a cluster from an automatic car. Now, the way I'm doing this, you don't have to copy it exactly. I'm just showing you how I'm doing it. We are going to disassemble this automatic transmission gauge cluster and use parts inside for the manual transmission gauge cluster. And just like that, we have access to the internal workings of this cluster. You can move these needles around and play with them if you want. Maybe even snap them off, you know. Anyway, we need this template right here. Simply pops right off. We're going to set this aside. Next up, going to remove this metal framework, which is a retainer for the gear position display window. Go to the back side, and then you'll see it passes through right here and right here. Simply pry on it and pop it out. Bam. Remove the display from the cluster like that. Take it, flip it around, and then peel off the screen. Removing that screen leaves you with a tinted window. Also going to rip off this ribbon like that. This instrument cluster is going to receive the Zodatech gauge. It is from a manual transmission car, so from factory, there is nothing here. It is blank. Before installing this gauge, we need to flip it around and take a look at the back. You can see that the plug goes right to the back of it. See that? Want to make sure that we have room for that plug, so I took the cluster and then had to notch it out for clearance. Furthermore, these male transmission gauge clusters, the template that goes here, it is totally blacked out in this section. So I took it, cut it in half, I will not be using this, and then I notched it out. I cut this window in it. This piece that I cut out 
it is going to go into the cluster just like that. I will then adhere it in there. Then I'll take the Zodotec gauge, put it in there like that, adhere it. Following that, I'll take the automatic template and install it as such. However, I did not like how this appeared. It looked kind of rough in there. So I will use this tinted window to make this look more OEM. We now have the Zodotec gauge installed into this cluster. I took the automatic template and I bonded that tinted window directly to it. And then you simply place this on top and there we go. Totally OEM appearance. Before installing this, there's a correction. Not only do you remove the orange screen, but there is also this additional layer of tint on here that must come off. If this tint stays on here, you will not be able to see through it clearly. It will be too dark. Check that out. You would never guess that right here lies a Boost and AFR gauge. Okay, so here we are in the cabin of the car. I have the wiring all complete. The wiring will vary depending which gauge you buy. This particular product is both the AFR and Boost gauge. This bundle right here is the AFR and Boost references. The gray harness is the AFR cable that goes right to the sensor. This yellow wire is for data logging. It goes directly to the ECU or DME. And then this hose right here is the vacuum and boost hose with that filter. When it comes to routing the wideband and boost references, you can come right through the ECU or DME box. Right there is the bottom plate of it, and there's these big holes that give you access right into the cabin of the car. I will show you where these go in a second. These cables right here are the chassis ground. They go right to the brake booster up in there. And then these red ones are the primary 12-volt ignition power. They run through across into the fuse box over there. As far as routing these to the fuse box, actually very easy. There is a section of unused wire shielding right here. You see that? That tunnel was totally empty. Nothing was inside. So those wires were free to just run right through it. And then it ends up on the opposite side of the dashboard. Here we have the fuse box. You can see my add a fuse or fuse tap. Fuse number 10 is the one that I tapped into. You can see the wire runs up, goes underneath the rubber bumper for the fuse box. I put a small notch in it so it surrounds and protects the wire. It then continues on to the main harness right there, which goes behind the fuse box. Continues on down here. Ties into the main body harness at a factory zip tie point. Keeps on going and then ends up into the tunnel right there. Everything is installed and all the wiring is ran as if it disappeared. That is what I was going for. It is all hidden up in here. I mounted the components right here underneath the steering column to the bottom of the dashboard. Let's go on a small adventure underneath the dashboard so you can see where this stuff ends up. It's in there. Look at that. Right there you can see the boost and AFR references attaching to the main body harness. And they run up and snake around. They go to the freaking thing right there. Right there you can see the chassis grounds. They run up and they avoid the pedals. And they come over to, again, up in here. The main power wires, they are tucked under the carpet. Go to the tunnel and they exit and go up into there. The nice part about this, there's still a big panel that covers all of this down here, so it's going to look flawless. And then up here is the plug for the Zodotec gauge. It will go right to the cluster. A little bit of Titan CHF, it's good stuff. Mix it in my tequila sometimes. All right, so here is the passenger side. You can see the glove box and the trim back installed. Looks freaking awesome. There we go. We have the panel installed. Everything is all concealed. Gauge cluster, on the bottom of it, there's a slot where the plug will go into. So let's go ahead and install this and test out the gauge. I have the gauge plugged in and the wires fastened. Check that out. There's like a little path for the wires to take in that plastic tab. Worked out perfect. Okay, testing the Zodotec gauge in three, two. Oh, there's an animation and, and a logo? What the? That is cool. That is freaking boosting AFR right in your face within the factory gauge cluster. 
That is just, that is really clean. What a freaking cool product that is. All right, so coming into the engine bay of this Turbo E46, we're going to go to the DME or ECU box, remove the lid, and I'll show you how I ran the harnesses. Up here at the rear corner, you can see the harness for the O2 sensor or wideband enters the box. And then right here is that vacuum and boost hose. They run down and eventually enter the cabin at the hole that I showed you earlier. This yellow wire right here is for data logging. It goes right to the ECU or DME. When it comes to data logging, you can use the existing downstream O2 sensor harnesses. Since this turbo build is no longer using downstream sensors, I basically hijacked that circuit for my data logging. So this wire right here goes directly into the EC or DME at pin 16 of connector X6002. The versions include MS42, MS43, MS45, and MSS54. All four of those have the same location, pin 16, connector X6002. This vacuum and boost hose goes directly to the back of the intake manifold, and then the wideband O2 sensor harness it runs down underneath the car. Down here, you can see the harness right there. It starts out by snapping into a, an existing wire harness holder right in there. Then it runs down, snapping into another factory wire harness holder right there. Then it goes up and over the transmission, eventually leading to the wide band O2 sensor in the downpipe. That is all for today's video. Zodatech, they offer a lot of cool products. They can also make a custom gauge per request. I will have a link to their website within the description and comment section of this video, as well as a discount code. If you make a purchase on the website using my discount code, not only do you get a discount, but it directly benefits my channel so I can produce awesome projects to share with you in the future. Until next time, I'll see you guys in the next video. Catch you later.